I didn't have much money, but I had time and a sense of wonder. So I started shooting time-lapse photography. It would take me a month to shoot a four-minute roll of film, because that's all I could afford. I've been shooting time-lapse flowers continuously, non-stop, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for over 30 years. And to see them move is a dance I'll never get tired of. I've known Nathan for about a year and a half. Well, Nathan's main role is design lecturer. So for me, as academic director, I think it's essential that uh, Nathan is very good at his craft and he's got a lot of experience teaching and also in industry. And I think what's essential is that, as a creative person, he can also communicate uh, and, and teach what he knows. So I think communication as a lecturer, a design lecturer, is very important. Um, I think Nathan's main role, is, as you know, is a coordinator for, for interactive media design and visual communication. But I think Nathan is, is, is excellent in the sense that he, uh, not only in that role, but as a lecturer, he spends a lot of good quality time with his students, not just in class, but outside. And I think he always supports his students very well in terms of projects outside of ours. And also he's, he's a very, very good team player, like he supports his other lecturers as well if there's exhibitions or any other activities. So he's, he's somebody who you can always absolutely rely on. That's a funny question, because I think to say, is anybody replaceable? Do you know what I mean? I think we all have our different skills. I think we all have our different uh, inputs. I think, as I said, I think Nathan is excellent as a design lecturer. He's very, very, very good uh, at what he does. Um, and I would like to think that we would never be in a situation that, you know, to have to answer that question <laughs> because he's very, very good at what he does and, and we love Nathan being here. Uh, with regards to his creativity in terms of setting up websites, photography, Yes, I've seen some examples, um, and again, I think that backs up how creative Nathan is as a, as a lecturer and as a designer. I went to college studying mostly video art, um, installation art, things like that. I took uh, one class of flash web design and created a website and 
people started to see that and hire me as web designer and that's really kind of how I got into the industry of web design. Um, I did that for years. It wasn't necessarily my favorite or the thing that I picked or ever decided that I would do, but it happened. Sorry. I've designed probably over a hundred websites. I've probably worked on a couple hundred more than that, depending. Uh, designed by scratch, probably about a hundred websites. Uh, designing definitely, it's better. Uh, when I freelance, I do developing and designing. Um, so it's really a lot of work, especially if the client needs something that I don't exactly know how to do, because I am a web designer, not a developer. A uh, developer is the hard end coding. So it's, it's nicer when you're working with a coder and you're the designer. So that developer actually does all of the uh, text coding and stuff you see here. And I do the pretty pictures. Yes, I have created many websites I'm not proud of. Uh, sometimes just to get the job done. It's um, for many reasons. Maybe it's a low budget. so. Um, obviously, if I have a low budget, I'm not putting hundreds of hours into a project if I'm not getting paid for it. Um, other times, you just have to please the client, and that doesn't always please your own design sensibility. For you. I guess photography is, uh, you know, capturing a moment in time. It's, uh, I think a lot of people put maybe too much relevance on photography. I don't see it as the most important um, thing. I like photography for myself as just a, sort of a hobby or, I don't know, something I do when I go places, but it's not, I don't see it as a, a necessary thing. I almost wish that there was no photography, to be honest. Um, sort of technology that I like and I've gotten behind um, but I think sometimes uh, you lose the moment when you're always standing behind a camera especially I, I like to travel a lot so uh, I go to see places and see things and sometimes I think you get stuck behind the camera too much and you actually lose what you're there to see so I don't know it's kind of a strange thing my relationship with photography I, I love it but I hate it it's a uh, um, I guess for me to come back later and see where I've been and see those photos, that's, that's the rewarding part of photography, but um, yeah, in general, uh, love-hate. <laughs> oh, I don't carry a lot else. Uh, I'm really kind of basic photographer. I don't, um, I carry like a few stock lenses and um, camera itself, a bag maybe. I don't consider myself a photographer so much. I use the camera for uh, a lot of other projects that I do, so I'm not necessarily um, going out to shoot photos as a photographer. One of my main passions is shooting time-lapse photography. And I guess that, the most important thing, is my intervalometer and tripod. Um, I like to shoot time-lapse photography, I think, because I get to sit up in one place, like something like this, and sit here for about or three hours and just kind of let the time go by. That's probably my favorite photography anyways, is shooting time-lapse. The intervalometer, definitely. Um, no, I took photography uh, in school. It was my minor. Um, I had a major in time-based media studies and my minor was actually still-based photography. Um, so I took all the courses I needed to. I could have actually chosen which major I wanted. A lot of what I've learned is on my own, though, at the same time. Yeah, many. Um, I think Ansel Adams is probably my favorite photographer. Um, I like uh, Richard Avedon a lot. Um, yeah. 
a lot of hard work. Uh, and lots of people have cameras nowadays. So I would say if photography is your thing, make sure you have another thing as well to accompany it. That would be my advice. Um, there's so many photographers out there and I think it's now probably one of the most competitive fields to get into. Um, if you're a photographer and you can also do web design, then you have two things that work together. Or photography and maybe graphic design. Um, I would say that's probably the best advice I could give anybody is to not just solely do photography. Because there's so many photographers out there. Yeah. Sure, I, mean, I, I dream of living without my camera, actually. <laughs>
Uh, how we get to know Nathan is through a few pieces of paper, his CVs and his competency forms. Uh, we just give Nathan a call uh, to his home in the States, have about 10 minutes of conversation and next thing he knows he's flying in. Je vais finir mes jours à Tambotou, la peau tirée par des machines à clous. Moi je veux cette fripée, diplement fripée, fripée comme une triplette de Belleville. Je vais finir ma vie à Agapou. I have a few favorite animated films. Um, can I tell you all three? Let's say three. Uh, my favorite film from childhood was Fantasia um, by Disney. Uh, it's amazing, kind of weird, mystical animation. Um, I would say currently my favorite animation is Triple to Belleville. Uh, it's really interesting, kind of crazy animation, hardly any words. And uh, Princess Mononoke is another favorite of mine. It's uh, quite a beautiful film. <laughs> Uh, there's traditional animation, like hand-drawn, um, cell animation, which I still, I think, respect the most out of any animation because it takes so long, and it's really kind of a beautiful effect when it's all put together. Um, Stop-motion animation, which is a lot of fun, interesting. Um, you see all kinds of stuff like claymation or um, just animated things. <laughs> That's very articulate. Um, what else? Uh, 3D animation. Um, there's some good 3D animations. I'm still not sold that much on it. Um, I'm trying to think what the best one is. Oh, it's pretty good. I think I still really like watching uh, hand-drawn animation the best. Um, I just like the I like the aesthetic of a hand-drawn animation more than anything. But I think as far as uh, actually animating, I love doing claymation and things like that. Um, stop motion with um, objects or things, um, maybe robotics and stuff like that. It's really pretty cool. That's a good question. I think there are animation projects I'm still working on. <laughs> um, like everything, I have ongoing projects, so I could say years. Um, but the longest time I actually spent to produce a finished animation, um, maybe three or four months, and that's for like a two minute animation. Uh, Nathan's lecturing capabilities uh, is pretty good, and I've been studying from him since day one at Raffles and uh, it was pretty awesome man. For me he's like a person that knows everything that regarding what we're studying at Raffles I think he's pretty good. It was pretty good and uh, one point where he helped me out really was our photography uh, semester where we had to do uh, 12 weeks of studying about photography and my finals, regarding my finals he helped me a lot because my finals were somewhat different and uh, he helped me with ideas and how to get it done plus uh, also he provided me with uh, equipment where I could use in that um, and I think I've had a lot of good experience with him and working with him and I'm really thankful for all the help that I've got from him. He's one damn good person.
guess illustration is making artwork for money, um, sort of as a graphic designer does, uh, making logo production websites and things like that. But an illustration, as opposed to a piece of art, is something that is, um, I guess, commissioned. So I might do an illustration for a so-and-so company, um, as opposed to an artwork where it's just created based on your own desire to create. Longest time, uh, including the gaps in between? Years. <laughs> I still have work that I'm working on that is unfinished. In fact, most illustrations that I do are pretty much unfinished. Um, longest time in one setting, I could easily, if I'm doing hand-drawn illustrations, spend four or five hours and not think about it. I like both. I like to be hands-on, so I like drawing for real uh, in a real sketchbook. And sometimes, if I'm inclined, then I will scan that in and digitize it. And inking first, so drawing black and white, and then bringing it into the computer and doing the color that way. I think that's the way I prefer to work because uh, the ink itself is something I like to do hands-on. But as far as color, um, it's much easier and. Um, I guess using the proper tools in, say, Illustrator or Photoshop, it's just more efficient to work that way. Nathan has been really helpful, like especially during our exhibition, he was like a major support and he was there at all times and he even propped up the guys and said that, you know, ask them, they will help you. He's also, um, he's firm, but not uh, harsh, as in like, I remember when he was teaching us, he used to make sure that we meet deadlines, but at the same time he used to be very supportive of our creative ideas and he never let us compromise our design with any other materials or you know any of that sort and um, I think in terms of uh, being an artist he's really impressive because we've seen a couple of his uh, freehand sketches and they're really good really superb and all in all he's he's silent but he's an extremely cool lecturer He's very um, practical and he's, uh, he also uses anything that he can find. Like you guys remember the, uh, we call it the robot, but I don't know what you all call it. The thing he made out of PVC pipes and uh, for yours exhibition, I think we put up all our posters and stuff and that was really resourceful. So I would say that um, he doesn't, he doesn't really need a, lot of material to start with he his ideas just like spring up so that's a good thing I graduated from the Columbus College of Art and Design in 2003. Uh, college life was crazy, it was difficult, um, but it was also very enjoyable. I worked very hard, I didn't have a lot of friends, um, I had a part-time job the whole time as well. And yeah, it wasn't quite easy, but I think in the end it pays off. I like how it feels. Um, it's good actually, it's a, it's a job I really like, um, 
I've worked in the industry and done all kinds of different odd jobs, but I think for me lecturing is one of the most rewarding things because um, I'm also learning at the same time. And you don't always get that opportunity when you're working in a design field. So. Uh, I think the best thing is watching my students excel um, and do good. Um, and learning from them as well, I think that's probably the best thing about lecturing is that it's not just me learning, or not just you learning, but both learning from each other. Um, especially moving out of my own country into a different country where I can learn um, different cultures and things like that. Uh, I know a few naughty things that I should probably not say in some of these. Um, I know numbers, basic things, uh, started to learn days, things like that. Godfather. Godfather. Relax. Jolly. Good. Super. Happy. I'm pretty good. Cool. Charming. Innovative. Creative. Brilliant. Inspirational. Sweet. Awesome. Cute. Hot. Helpful. Friendly. Reticent. Interesting. Bro. Damn.